This is the Battlefront Plastic T55 T55 AM2 kit. Battlefront initially released the T55 as a resonant metal model, but with the numbers of them players need to field it makes a lot of sense for this to be released in plastic. T55 was the main Soviet tank from the 1950s, and this rugged and dependable design is still in service with many countries around the world. This kit builds the original T-55 as well as the upgraded T-55 AM2 with laser rangefinder and add-on armour. This kit is the tank's the modern age expansion but the plastic inside is the same as the T-55 for Team Yankee, Nam and Fate of a Nation. Given the number of game systems and armies this tank can be used for a plastic kit is very welcome. Plastic also makes it easier to design a single kit that can build the wide range of variants found in all these different time periods. If we look at the blister insert, this expansion has one unassembled plastic T55 kit. It has tanks cards for both T55 and T55 AM2, as well as a hero card, two crew cards and two upgrade cards. If you buy this same kit for other Battlefront game systems, you'll get the relevant card for the T55 in that game instead. The insert also has the assembly instructions. These show the various options for assembling the T-55 or the T-55 AM2. Let's look at the plastic. The kit parts come on two sprues of olive green plastic. The first sprue has the upper hull and two different turrets. Having two different turrets simplifies construction rather than having to glue on the extra armour and different stowage for the AM2 variant. It's a nice touch. There's also the rear hull piece as well as two glasses pieces. One is for the standard T-55 while the other is up armoured, again for the AM-2. The side skirts here are normally found on the Chinese Type 59. The second sprue has the lower hull and tracks. The tracks and road wheels are single piece parts. This simplifies construction. The parts are keyed so they can't go on the wrong way. As with most Battlefront track designs, the tracks and road wheels are well detailed. The tracks have simplified detail underneath, but more detail around the idler and drive sprockets and along the top of the track run. This puts the extra detail where it can be seen once the kit is assembled. The side skirts here are the Soviet pattern for the AM2. The Cold War T-55 wasn't normally fitted with side skirts. There's also an open and closed option for the commander's coupler. There are two versions of the 100mm D10T main gun. The gun with the bore evacuator near the muzzle is for the T-55, while the one with thermal sleeves and laser rangefinder box is for the AM-2. The last item of note is the two machine gun options. Earlier tanks have the option of the Dushka 12.7mm AA machine gun for the loader's hatch on the previous sprue. However, the kit also includes this NSVT for later variants. For a while during the Cold War jet age, AA machine guns weren't fitted to T-55s, with them being reintroduced as the threat from helicopters increased. So those are the kit parts. Mouldings are crisp and sharp with plentiful and well-defined detail, the sort of quality we've come to expect from Battlefront. The flexibility to build Cold War, Middle East, Jungle or modernised variants from the one kit is very welcome, as are the extra touches like including a separate turret for the AM2 rather than having to glue on extra armour and stowage pieces. This makes for a quicker and simpler build, but also makes the finished kit more robust, with less chance these parts will come adrift during table use. Given the number of these older tanks players have to assemble for massed East German or Syrian armies, anything that speeds up assembly must be a bonus. Let's do a bit of history. The T-55 is a direct development from the venerable World War II vintage T-34. The need to keep T-34 production high limited further development of the design to upgunning and up-armouring. With T-34 production at sufficient levels later in the war, the T-44 was developed. This retained the 85mm armament in a slightly larger turret, but introduced torsion bar suspension and mounted the engine transversely to save space. The vehicle had similar cross-country performance but was lower in silhouette and had better armour. About 2,000 T-44s were produced and saw limited service, but it soon became obvious a bigger gun would be required. Fitting a 100mm gun to the design necessitated the increase in both hull and turret size, resulting in the T-54. Initially the turret had a pronounced overhang, but this changed over time, developing into a more domed shape that became standard for Soviet tanks. 
The small counterweight for the stabilisation system on the 100mm gun was replaced with a bore evacuator that vented propellant gases. The design continued to develop, adding a more powerful engine, two-axis stabilisation and NBC protection, being accepted into service in 1958 as the T-55. Despite slightly thinner armour, the T-55 performance was roughly equivalent to the heavy T-10, and these medium tanks gradually took on the heavy tank role as well. This was the start of the main battle tank, tanks with sufficient mobility protection and firepower to take on all battlefield armour roles. The T-55 was the mainstay Soviet tank of the Cold War, continuing to serve as frontline tanks into the 1980s. T-55s were used in most Warsaw Pact nations and were exported widely, seeing action in Asia, Africa and the Middle East. Czechoslovakia and Poland also produced the design both for domestic use and export. China produced and widely exported the T-55 as the Norinco Type 59. Despite being an older design, the T-55 is still in service today. Many have been modernised with ERA, side skirts and other add-on armour packages improving protection and advances in ammunition and sighting systems including laser rangefinders increasing lethality. The improved T-55 AM2 version has side skirts, smoke dischargers, add-on turret and glasses armour, as well as thermal sleeves to the main gun, wind sensors, laser rangefinder and computerised fire control. Many other countries have also upgraded their own T-55 fleets, and although not a match for modern armour, the T-55 is still a frontline tank around the world. Given just how ubiquitous the T-55 family is worldwide, the T-55 will find a home in game theatres covering the Middle East, Cold War Europe, Vietnam and Asia, Africa, India and Pakistan and more. Let's look at the East German T-55 AM2 in Team Yankee. The T-55 is a tank unit with bazooka skirts and infrared. Bazooka skirts increase the side armour protection to 10 against heat warheads. Not a big increase from their already respectable side armour of 9, but every little helps. Infrared means the unit can roll two dice for night visibility and choose the highest result. Courage is 4+, plus with a morale of 3+, plus and a remount of 4+. Plus. These are well-motivated troops with good fighting spirit, but an appreciation of the deficiencies of their vehicle make them a bit more reluctant to get back in and keep on fighting after being hit. Skill is a 4+, plus less than the more professional NATO troops but better trained than Soviet conscripts. An assault of 5 plus and counterattack 4 plus means it can be harder to get East Germans to assault and keep them in the fight when you do. T-55s are hit on a 3 plus, with a front armour of 14, side of 9 and a top armour of 2. In the Team Yankee time frame, these numbers are a bit marginal against the firepower of modern weapons so you'll need to take as much advantage of concealment, covering fire and superior numbers to take the day. Although the side armour of 9 along with side skirts rules means you can ignore some lesser anti-tank assets if you need to push up past them. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres, with decent dash speeds but a 4 plus cross. You'll want to keep these units out of difficult terrain, or use the cross here movement order to keep these tanks from getting stuck. On to the firepower. The 100mm D10T gun can shoot 32 inches or 80 centimetres. It has a halted and moving rate of fire of 1. Anti-tank is 17 with the 2 plus firepower. This is a lot less penetration than later guns but still able to do some damage. Laser rangefinder means there's no to hit penalty for targets over 16 inches or 40 centimetres range. Slow firing means a plus 1 to hit penalty when firing on the move. So even though rate of fire moving and halted is the same, there is a to hit advantage in shooting while stationary. The 12.7mm Dushka AA machine gun has a 20 inch or 50 cm range, a halted rate of fire of 3 and moving rate of 2, with AT4 and a 5 plus firepower. The sheer number of these able to fire at helicopters will help keep hunter killer choppers under control. The coaxial 7.62mm machine gun has a 16 inch or 40 cm range, moving and halted rate of fire of 1. AT2 and a 6 firepower. So the stats for the T55 don't stack up against more modern vehicles, but they are cheap. 3 T55s are only 2 points, and you can get 10 for 16 points, so NATO players will have a lot of these to kill. East Germans will want to be using speed and numbers to swarm a more capable opponent, getting in for side shots. 
you can fit up to three T55s per company with mine plows for just one additional point. So given the age of the design, it's a tribute to it that it still has a place on the battlefield. The massive numbers that can be fielded give it a chance to overwhelm more advanced designs. So that's the plastic T55 from Battlefront. Players who need T55s will be very happy to have this vehicle available in plastic. Given the numbers that need to be fielded for some armies, this is a more economical option than the earlier resin and metal alternatives. The kit goes together well without major issues. It also looks great. Including two separate turrets is a strong choice. This makes building the different variants quicker and easier. No fiddly gluing on of extra stowage or add-on armour to the turret to make the AM2. All this is just moulded onto the alternative turret. This also means less chance of any of these parts coming loose during play or transport. Given how many games in the Battlefront game franchise Field T55's a plastic kit is a worthwhile and welcome addition to the range. The overall quality of the finished product and the thoughtful engineering with simplicity and tabletop play in mind is well up to the standard we've come to expect. <laughs>